Hiring an illustrator for your book is probably one of the parts of the book writing process that can be really intimidating or even somewhat scary. I mean, after all, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into this book and now you're giving it to someone to really bring it to life. More importantly, it's a pretty big investment and so you wanna make sure that you're being really strategic about the process. But I have good news. The idea, the process, the steps behind Hiring a high quality illustrator and really bring your vision to life doesn't need to be challenging and it doesn't need to be overwhelming. So today I want to share the steps that you can take to take what seems like an overwhelming process and really make it seamless. First, you're gonna to wanna to know what style of illustrator do you want? Now, there's like comic book, there's like graphic novels, there's all these different things, but the best thing that I tell my clients is to really go for the illustrator that's most intriguing. Like when you're looking at their previous work, what work stands out to you? Why does it stand out? Is it the color? Is it the design? Is it the layout? Usually if it stands out or is visually appealing to you, you're going to connect and resonate with that illustrator on another level as well. So consider what you're looking for because there may be certain illustrators that you connect with that maybe don't do your style of work. You know, I had a client of mine who was working on an African-American poetry children's book. And so the illustrator she was working with didn't feel comfortable with that type of work. And so it's important to have an understanding of the type of illustrator that you're seeking on the process. Next, you're gonna to wanna to consider time frame. If you find a high quality illustrator, nine times out of 10, they usually are pretty busy. So if you have a book that you're trying to pump out in two weeks, that illustrator may not be able to meet that time frame. So make sure you have a reasonable time frame as well when you're looking for an illustrator. Then we wanna move into budget. Now I'm gonna be really honest. If you're thinking, well, I don't really have the budget to get a quality illustrator, so I'm gonna kind of skimp out on this price, then what I'm going to advise is that you actually wait until you have a budget to hire a high quality illustrator. And this is important because your images speak volumes. And so if you have images that look really kind of unattractive, that look kind of like not so good, then ultimately that's going to be what sells your book. And you want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward with those images. So not only do you want to consider the budget on that aspect, consider how many illustrations in total you'll need, considering like the front and the back page, as well as the number of pages, because that's also a key contributing factor to how much it's going to ultimately cost to hire an illustrator. I know some people that have found illustrators for $45, and I know people that have found illustrators for $2,200. Here's the thing, you often get what you pay for. So along that process, don't just look at price and jump on price. Consider looking at previous work to see if the work speaks for themselves, right? You want work that looks high quality so that you're making sure you're investing in something that's actually worthwhile. The next thing you'll want to consider before contacting an illustrator, just so that you have a plan in place, is you're going to want to lay out what your expectations are. What are you expecting from the illustrator? And then when you move into contacting the illustrator, it's important that your expectations are communicated clearly, as well as you listening to the illustrator's expectations so that you guys are on the same page. Now, here's the key piece. It can't just be you guys communicating about it and then being done. It's important that you actually get it in written form. And here's why. At the end, if somebody, if you guys just communicate, it's easy to it's easy to misunderstand or miscommunicate. And then at the end, someone is left unhappy or frustrated. But if you have something in written form, you always have something that you can reference and say, this is what I was expecting or this is what I was hoping. I had an unfortunate situation with an illustrator. I hired an illustrator, paid a deposit, and the illustrator kind of just went ghost on me. And I didn't hear from the illustrator for a while, probably about two weeks, which was already frustrating in of itself because that's when my first draft was supposed to come back. Now, by the time I gotten in contact with the illustrator, he'd given me a first draft, but it was nothing along the lines of what we had talked about. But fortunately for me, because I had that contract, I was able to hold him accountable to it. Now, unfortunately, the relationship ended up having to be severed because there were a lot of times where he went ghost and I wasn't hearing from him or he wasn't giving the full deliverables. But because of my contract, I was able to sever that, that relationship pretty smoothly and move to my next editor or my next illustrator. 
Now, after you have the groundwork laid, you know your expectations, you really understand your budget, you know what you're looking for, you have an idea of what your expectations and the contract requests would be, now it's time to seek an illustrator. Now, there's a couple different places that you can go to seek an illustrator. There's like Upwork, there's Fiverr, there is childrensillustrator.com. There's a ton of different options that you have. But the one thing that I'll say is do not skimp on this process. Make sure you do thorough research to make sure that you connect with the best illustrator for your project. Remember, this is your book, baby, and you want to deliver it to the world in the best way possible. After connecting with your illustrator and you're set to go, one of the things that I often talk about is creating an illustrator's layout. Now, there are some people that are really creative illustrators and they just kind of want to flow and they just want to work in their zone of creativity. And a lot of authors are comfortable with that. But then there's a lot of authors who really have a very solid vision in their mind of what they want their story to look like. And if that's you, having an illustrator's layout is very helpful. And in fact, I still recommend it even if not because it still gives them a frame of reference to build upon, okay? So with an illustrator's layout, there's a couple different things that you can include. For me, I included color codes. Now, my illustrator requested this, but now I recognize the value of it, right? It's important instead of just saying, oh, I want pink. Now you say I want EE131383 or whatever it may be, right? You want to be able to give a certain version of pink. Instead of saying turquoise, you're giving the code number, right? The reason that this is important is because it keeps a uniformed look throughout your book um, to maintain that consistency. And if you've done the research and you really know what your audience is looking for, your colors are going to be speaking to them. So you want to make sure that you're really strategic about those as well. If you go to rapidtables.com, you can actually find a couple of like those hex or color codes that you can share with your illustrator. In addition to color codes, you want to make sure that you really live out your characters. So explain your characters to your illustrator. What do you expect your character to look like? Do they have curly hair, short hair, long hair, wavy hair, brown hair, blonde hair? Are they younger or are they older? Do they have wrinkles? Um, I remember when I was helping my daughter to create her book, The Birthday Test, this was really big for me because one of the main characters in this book is called the Age Master. Um, and the Age Master, for me, I had a, a clear vision of what he looked like, but my illustrator drew him with glasses. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, except for the fact that it just, it really, it really struggled. It made my vision struggle. So it's important that you really identify what you want your characters to look like so that your illustrator can build on that and really create the story that you have now played out in your head. In addition to characters, you can also consider sharing with your illustrator really important scenes. So you could say, okay, there is a scene where the lion is falling off of the mountain or something like that. I just watched Lion King with my girls, so that's on my mind. And explain like what's happening around that scene, what you want it to look like, and really go in depth that there's important scenes that you really want to hone in. Or you can take it to the next level. So one of the things that I did is I made a very thorough layout. So on each page, I said, you know, this certain paragraph, went with um, this certain picture and I gave a very descriptive uh, format of it. So for example, um, I would say, I want my character standing in the field, smelling a flower with the age master standing behind her in circles, uh, circles of numbers floating around the age master's head, right? Instead of just saying, oh, she had a dream that she was in a field, I wanted the picture to really go in depth with what the words were explaining. And so for me, I did a page by page layout. Now, the cool thing with my illustrator is that he took it a, you know, a step beyond. So instead of just drawing some grass around her, he drew lilies and he really built on what I saw, but I still had to describe what it was that I wanted. Now, you can be as extreme as me and say that you really want to go in depth with it, or you can just give them a couple few hints, or you can kind of let them flow. But the more details you have, the more the illustrator is able to build on it, and the less likely you'll need to do this crazy number of revisions or edits. And then in turn, you're able to get your book back in a fair amount of time. Now, excluding the illustrator that I had a hard time with, if I had just gone with the, the second illustrator that I had and I did my layout the way that I did, really that time frame was pretty, really small. I want to say it was about two weeks. And that was the, including the back or forth, really laying out the expectations and all of that. But because I had my vision so clearly laid out, it was easy for my illustrator to be able to build upon that. 
So here's a picture of the scene I told you about. I'd given my illustrator, you know, these words, which kind of explain what's happening, but I really gave him more of like a vision of, well, I wanted the girl here. I wanted the age master there. But having that layout allowed him to go into the to that next level. Now, here's another thing that you're going to want to consider when you're getting illustrations done for your book is you're going to want to consider how much of an illustration do you want? Because some illustrators will illustrate half of a page or one fourth of a page or a third of a page. Page, this is considered a full illustration, right? Because the entire page is covered. But then if you look over here, you're able to see that there is a quarter of an illustration because there's parts of the pages that are illustrated. So my illustrator took that a step further because that was not something that I originally requested, but he used his vision and expressed that that was something he thought would be a good fit for the book. And I couldn't have agreed more. He did such a good job with um, the, you know, this is a full illustration on one page, but on the other page, it's still keeping the kids engaged because there's still somewhat of a color and things to for them to look at and engage with. So that's something else that you want to think of is how big do you want the illustration? Do you want it to cover the whole page? Do you want it to be under the words? Do you want it to go around the words? There's a lot of different options that you have. Same thing with the cover. You know, for me, I got a full cover illustration because it could have just been all white and then maybe, you know, the character is right here and then been done. But I got a full cover illustration even through the back. So it really comes down to you identifying what you want your vision to look like and, and pairing with your illustrator for them to take it a step further. Overall, the illustration process doesn't have to be challenging. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. In fact, it can be one of the most fun parts of the process. When you hire a quality illustrator and you guys are able to work as a team, you really get to see your vision come to life. So I wanted to share these tools and these strategies so that you can begin to incorporate these into your creation process to, again, make it seamless. So I'm going to let, let you dive in and get started. And until next time, I will chat with you later.